Hi! Before we start this video, we want to take a minute to really show our appreciation for those of you who have given us support through Patreon and through our website um, over the past couple months. You are an enormous help to us. We appreciate it so much and um, can't show enough gratitude. So we're going to read your names right now so that you can really know how much we appreciate it. Yeah, we want to thank you individually and by name. <laughs> so we want to thank Herb and Debbie, Graham, Michael, Jovan, Thomas, Alan, and Ian. You guys have been a huge help to us. And it's totally worth it because of you all and um, the amazing support that you've given us and shown in your comments and your likes and yeah. just... And for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> it's been wonderful and uh, we're having so much fun because of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to raise anchor right now and kind of scoot down the river because we don't have our mainsail, so we're just gonna use our staysail stand to get there and see how it goes. Herbie's gonna raise up 100 and, how many? 120. 120. No, 150. Yeah, there yeah. we go, 150 feet of anchor right now, so wish him luck. <laughs> Just flying Stan on his self tacker. That's the only sail we have up, and we're cooking along. <laughs> hey, Herbie, we found this and thought you might want it cruising. <laughs> oh, sweet! Ah, this guy's so my favorite. Cute. It's Herbie's favorite. Nice. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Herbie is building the cradle for the dinghy that's going to go on our deck. We got a whole bunch of parts here. We're going to try to build the rack for the dinghy. The only issue when I was picking up all these elbows, I got three that are the correct size and one that was in the bin with all the other ones, so I will almost finish it today, <laughs> except for that one elbow. So we're just going to get it put together and hopefully it'll work well. We're going to try it out on the deck. No, no short is on starboard. Okay. No, long's on port. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the chimney's on the port side. No, the chimney's on the starboard side. Chimney's on the right. <laughs> As you're looking forward. Which is starboard. <laughs> yes, it is. Can we include that in this video? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just the fact that I was right. And I don't know left and right. Yeah. So we're trying a lot of different things and a lot of different lengths of pipe to see which is the best. Right now we're doing, we're switching five foot to over here by the chimneys to see if we can get it behind it rather than in front of it so that we have more of the dinghy supported.
Hey boy. We're coming in on my dad's boat right now and he has a system set up where the dock lines are all pre-measured and tied in places that you can grab them sequentially as you come in. So we're gonna film what happens at the stern with the stern lines to watch the orchestra take place. The stern lines are kept tied to the hand rope on the side. So all you have to do is come in, untie them, and then you can pop them right on the cleats there's no muss, no fuss, and the lines stay dry and spotless. It's a great system. <laughs> no? I, I will get it. Oh my god. I am a human. I use tools. <laughs> Got it. Nice. <laughs> so now we have a five foot pipe, four 10 inch pipes, that way the dinghy's not so ridiculously high up in the air. And a crack size elbow, not a misboxed one. So hopefully we can build it and it'll be ready to roll. Very good. Yes. And Morty is a dog. Yes. And as true sailors, we don't actually have a leash. Just use a sail tie for him. He knows no different. <laughs> Shall we go? Yes. Again. Yes. Hello, Morty. Would you like to join us down here? Morty. Morty. Hello. So a lot of people have asked us what we're doing uh, for navigation when we're out and just like in the open sea. Well, we have a chart plotter, which is electronic, and it's gonna help us out a lot, but it's only for US waters. So then the question would be, what do we do outside of the US? And what happens if our chart plotter dies? We are gonna get an app to help us chart uh, waters outside of the US. But again, that brings up the point, electronics die. What are we gonna do just in case? So Herbie's gonna take you through our plans and what we have and what we know. This is our nav station. And we actually use it as a nav station. <laughs> yeah. So electronics are excellent. They make life so easy. All you have to do is look at it and it tells you everything that you would ever wanna know but electronics can also fail. They need electricity and they don't mix well with salt water. And on a sailboat, electricity is hard to come by and salt water is plentiful. So we are firm believers in mechanical backups. And uh, the most important mechanical backup is paper charts. So chart books are great because they provide you with tons of charts in a very affordable package and there's insets in the beginning that tell you how you can find each chart that you need, and they're awesome. You can get a very current chart book with updated charts for like 40 or 50 bucks, but that doesn't really give you uh, as much information on a big picture scale. Like as you can see, these charts are nice, but they're small, and you have to keep turning the page to keep plotting your point. So this is good for local inland waters, but when you get offshore, it's not as good. So another thing that we have is actual paper charts. Put this guy back. <laughs> so this here is a map of San Miguel, which is one of the islands in the Azores. And being paper, you can write on it. And that is what's so important. So electronics are awesome. They'll tell you exactly where you are. But when things don't go so well, you need to fall back on backups. Now, there's two really important backups that you need to do. One is dead reckoning, and the other is to get your position with a sextant. Now, sextants are great, but you need the almanac with them. So pretty much with a sextant, you're able to sight the sun or stars, and then based on the time of day and date that you did the sighting, 
you can then look it up in this almanac and it'll tell you where you are, your latitude and longitude. And then you can plot those points on a chart. So that's excellent as long as you have the book. Say the book gets wet and you lose the book. There is a very cheap and rough trick that you can do. One is you uh, get a sundial or something that can work as a sundial and at noon the shadow is going to be shortest. So you figure out endpoint due north. So you figure out exactly when you are having your local noon, which is when the sun is directly overhead, and you figure out the time difference from where you are to Greenwich Mean Time, and that'll give you your longitude. Then at night, you use the sextant and you sight Polaris, which is the North Star. What its angle is to the horizon is your latitude. So between the two, you can figure out your latitude and your longitude. So as long as you're traveling in a straight line, you can get a rough idea of where you are in the world. So those are like your ultimate fail-safe backups. Uh, lastly, you have dead reckoning. So dead reckoning is literally, you know you were here when your electronics died, and you were traveling at five knots in this direction, so you can plot every hour you're gonna be five nautical miles further. So you can follow that line and assume you're gonna come somewhere into this range. And then using the depth contour lines on the chart, along with your depth sounder, you can kind of guesstimate exactly or roughly where you are. So these are the importance of paper backups because when your electronics fail, these are still around and you can still look at them and figure out roughly where you are and get yourself to safety. So to help alleviate the burden of the cost, we're spreading out when we buy the charts. So right now we have a chart book for Bermuda and paper charts for the Azores. Simply because we know we're going to Bermuda and then the Azores. That's We're not going anywhere else first. From there we're not exactly sure where we're going and the Azores are a huge cruisers hub. So from here we'll be able to get the charts for the next destination that we're heading. And as we go and we pick where we're going next, we'll get the charts for that place. So this helps alleviate the cost and it also takes out the risk that you buy charts for somewhere and then you end up not getting there for say three years and now those charts are old and the bottom's changed. So it keeps us with the most current chart and it doesn't break the bank all at once. It just spreads out the pain. <laughs> I'm not perfect and I've only studied celestial navigation. I haven't actually put it into much practice because in the Chesapeake either you can't get a perfect view of the horizon or you don't really need to because you can get hand bearings and figure out where you are because it's such a small area. Uh, when we get out in the ocean, I'm actually going to start truly testing my skills with the sextant. Uh, to make sure that I'm actually on course with where we think we are, I'm going to be double checking it with our actual position given to us by this GPS. So this gives us our coordinates and then I will plot where I think we are and then double check them with the GPS. So pretty much it'll tell us is Herbie any good at this or should we run and hide from his numbers? So if the <laughs> electronics all fail and I know that I'm usually like 10,000 miles off from where we think we are, just throw the sextant overboard. It's not working for me. Uh, or I, I'm not able to do it. Uh, if we know that we're you know much closer then we can use those numbers more accurately. Uh, sextants are not by any means nearly as accurate as GPS. So GPS will put your position down to like a couple feet. Like this does it to a thousandth of a degree. Uh, with the sextant, if you're really good on a moving boat, because remember you're taking a sighting from something that's like wobbling all over the place. So if you can get within a hundred mile radius of where you actually are, that's considered pretty good. Uh, the idea of a sextant isn't to tell you exactly where you are, but it's to help you find land. So you know land is here. If you can get within a hundred miles of here, then you can spot the land by other things that we can go over in the future, and that'll help get you there and get you to land. <laughs> so that is the true goal of a sextant. It's to help you find your way to land and not so much know exactly that you are on this tiny little dot right there. So. Land is not always easy to spot on the horizon because sometimes these islands are actually really small and flat, but a huge giveaway that you can see from hundreds of miles away are clouds. 
land will always have a cloud that hovers directly over it. So if you see on the horizon many clouds moving along, they're just clouds. If you see a specific cloud that just stays put, and it's in the general direction of where you believe land should be, you found land. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we will finish the dinghy rack and discuss the importance of a shakedown cruise and why we are still in Maryland. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much.